Don't mind me erasing some brain cells before I do this intro. Uh, I'm having a pretty good afternoon so far, and I'm especially excited because I'm about to share a original creation of mine with you guys that hopefully all of you will enjoy. Let's get started. Hey there, hi there, ho there. My name is Michael. I'm a bartender from Kalamazoo, Michigan, and today we're going to talk about an original creation of mine. I decided that uh, once I started doing Tuesday uploads that they're going to be a little bit shorter, a little bit less history heavy, more likely going to be original things that I've come up with or like miscellaneous bar tips, like how to make cool syrups and stuff like that. It won't be an every week thing, but as long as I can do it, meaning I have the time to film an episode, uh, we'll do it. And I actually just recently finished making the cocktail we're talking about today, and Athens has fallen, and uh, I felt like sharing it with you guys. So, bonus content. You know, you gotta love that, right? Sorry if I'm a little all over the place. I just finished the Mind Eraser Replacer 2.0 video. That's what that is. It's delicious. Click the card to learn how to make that. So, the cocktail that I came up with is called An Athens Has Fallen, and the inspiration begins with the entry for the high tide that appears in Black Mixolens, one of the cocktail books on this shelf behind me, written by Tamika Hall, who is subscribed to this channel, which is fucking insane to me, holy shit. <laughs> I wanna say, quick aside, I'll never stop preaching this book. Uh, buy a copy of this book. It is not only a fantastic cocktail recipe book and like mixology history lesson, it is a beautiful reclamation of a lot of black culture stolen by white people for the sake of getting them drunk. And it's more important than ever in today's day and age to acknowledge that we need to give back history to the people who actually wrote it. So, I'm right off my soapbox now, but buy a copy of this fucking book, asshole. It's a great book, fuck you. Not you, Tamika, you're great, you're, you're awesome. Thank you for writing this book. Fuck the people who don't want to buy it. Like in the description. <laughs> so the inspiration starts for this cocktail, starts in that book with The High Tide, which is a cocktail by Colin Asariapia, who helped write the book. Um, and it features a very particular liqueur called Mastaha liqueur, or Mastic liqueur. I wanted to work that into a cocktail of my own making, and eventually I went into a couple different directions with it, figured out what worked and what didn't, and settled on a cocktail that is inspired very vaguely by medieval history and a pre-existing cocktail called a bourbon for breakfast. Now, when I say this is inspired very loosely by history, I wanted to include, that means I wanted to include ingredients that were connected to something, something that, it was something meaningful. And that came in the form of both Mastic Liqueur and Keens Brandy. Now, Keens is a sort of apple pear adjacent fruit that's really common in Norse mythology. It's thought to be this mythical sort of God-sent, eternal life-giving fruit. It appears, uh, at least not necessarily directly, but it appears, is assumed to have appeared uh, in a lot of Norse mythological writings. Um, and I thought, oh, okay, well, if the drink is called an Athens is Fallen, who is it falling to? Vikings. <laughs> that was my attention deficit hyperactivity disorder answer to what goes into a drink called the Athens has fallen. <laughs> and because it's an Athens has fallen, we have to have a Greek ingredient and that's Masta liqueur, which is made from mastic trees and those grow exclusively on the island of Chios in Greece. So that's our base for the two of them. And I decided I needed to figure out in what capacity these work. Initially, I wanted to set them up alongside a bitter aperitif, like Aperol, for example, but I found that combining one liqueur with another, because Aperol is unfortunately very sweet, made it kind of unpalatable. So instead, I took inspiration from a cocktail called a bourbon for breakfast. Bourbon for breakfast is a sort of breakfast-y-ish themed uh, whiskey sour that features orange marmalade and orange juice as part of its sort of concoction, sort of its recipe. It's an interesting idea and I thought it would work really well in this context. I took it, you know, modified it, played with it, and I think I've settled on a spec that works really, really well and creates a very interesting, unique, flavor that you're not going to get anywhere else. Enough wax and poetical, let's just go ahead and, and make an Athens is Fallen. We're going to make an Athens is Fallen. What do we need to do that? For starters, we said we have to have a Keens and a Mastic note. Uh, mastic liqueur is relatively easy to get, actually. As it turns out, when I bought this bottle, I special ordered it. I didn't need to. Uh, the specialty liquor store that I used and ordered this for me already had some on the shelf that I wasn't aware of. You can find it in nicer specialty shops. Um, in any major city. Keen's Brandy, maybe a little bit less so. So this is Keen's Brandy. It's an ODV, meaning a brandy made from 
uh, fruit. So like a pear eau de vie is a brandy where the distilled base is made from pear. In this case, it's made from Keats and this is a Slovakian brandy. Um, I've had this brand before for plum brandies. They're very, very harsh. They're not the nicest brandies out there, but it does carry this very interesting, gentle flavor of Keats alongside this really just robust brandy, which works really well in a sour context, which is basically what we're doing. Are there better ones out there? Probably, yeah. And ones that might show the flavor of the Keynes a little bit better. In general, Keynes being what it is, this sort of apple pear crossbreed-ish kind of thing, um, it doesn't carry a ton of flavor and they're actually really hard when you try to bite into them. Um, so extracting their flavors is a bit uh, tedious, for lack of a better phrase. This is an honest attempt at that, but something higher quality might produce a more prominent flavor. That being said, this works just fine in the context that we're using it in now, so if you can only find this, go for it. Is there a replacement? Uh, not really, no. I have a bottle of St. George Pear Brandy that I was initially building this cocktail with. Pear didn't make sense thematically, um, and also this is really strong pear eau de vie. It is really, really present pear in your face, and uh, it didn't really work. If you were gonna substitute the Keynes brandy, you're not making an Athens has fallen. Outside of those two things, we're gonna need some Angostura bitters, uh, lime juice, uh, excuse me, lemon juice, which I've got sitting over there, some orange marmalade, and uh, just a teensy bit of simple syrup. Without further ado, let's build a cocktail. Actually, um, without further ado, let's wash the glass the cocktail gets to go in. My dumbass forgot about the glasses. Okay, that's better. I'm gonna start off by adding just a bar spoon of simple syrup to the shaker here. Uh, now I'm doing just a bar spoon because the marmalade is going to add a fair amount of sweetness, but it's not a sweetness that is without question, I suppose. Marmalade is sweet. If you've ever put it on toast, you know that it's sweet, but it's not robust enough of a sweetness to pull the drink together on its own. This little bit of simple syrup will keep it from being saccharine, overly sweet, but will allow all of the flavors to sort of make themselves known and balance everything together so you're not missing, you know, the mastic or the quince or the orange or the lemon. Over top of that, I'm going to add three to four, up to five dashes of Angostura bitters. It's like Athens has fallen. I needed a note that was burning adjacent uh, and baking spices, I thought, went really well with orange and lemon and brandy. So that is what we're doing there. Next up, I'm going to need two ounces of Keens brandy. Once we have our Keens in there, and the aromas are just billowing out of the shaker. Awesome. <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and add uh, a heaping bar spoon of our marmalade. This is going to give us a robust sort of orange peel adjacent flavor, which is important, I think, in this context. When it comes to the marmalade, we're going to add a heaping bar spoon. I would say this is about equivalent to somewhere between one and two tablespoons. Next up, I'm going to do uh, an ounce of our mastic liqueur. This one here, I believe is Castro's. This one I had to have imported and special ordered, but there are other ones available in the United States already uh, that a specialty liquor store might have. And then last, but certainly not least, as it is our balancing citrus component, we need some lemon juice. We're gonna go for a full ounce in this context. Taking lemon juice and augmenting it with orange flavors is more approachable an idea than using orange juice, which in cocktails can often be very flat because it lacks the acid component we need to properly, you know, balance the drink. I'm gonna give this a quick stir with my bar spoon to sort of try and clean off the, uh, the marmalade to make sure it all ends up in the cocktail here. And then we're going to go ahead and add some ice to shake, chill, and dilute. If you haven't caught on by now, <laughs> uh, I, I use the same ethos for ice uh, every single time. Um, one cube cracked, one cube whole. And I believe David Wondert or uh, some modern cocktail historian is the one who came up with that. He found it makes the most consistent, robust cocktails that are just the right amount of diluted to be perfectly, eminently drinkable. So I stick with that because it works. We're gonna add in our large cube here, cap it up. Tap it down and give that a shake for 12 to 15 seconds to chill and dilute. Now in this particular case, um, I'm cutting it obviously in the editing room, but 
I actually shook that for closer to 20 seconds because the marmalade is thick. There's fruit pectins in it that make marmalade marmalade. That's why it's a spreadable paste, essentially. Those things need time to dissolve and be broken up and mix into the drink. So I shook it for closer to 20 seconds to accomplish that and make sure there's as little, you know, undissolved marmalade in the shaker as possible. We're gonna grab a uh, double rocks glass here, freshly clean, and we're gonna crack a couple cubes of ice into it for our drink. Once we have a comfortable amount of ice in our glass, give that one last shake to make sure it's combined, and then strain the cocktail over the ice. That has no garnish, actually. Uh, I don't feel that it needs one, so that gets served forth as an Athens has fallen. So we've cleaned up our space, so let's go ahead and give our Athens has fallen a taste. Oh man, yes. Yes. In this particular, oh man, that's good. Ah. So in this particular case, um, I, I kind of build the Athens a little bit differently every time. There's a little bit of variation that goes into it, particularly because of the marmalade. There's a bit more in here and I'm definitely getting it. Marmalade, orange marmalade, even when it's sweet, has this really particular sourness to it, most likely coming from the combo of citrus juice and peel added to it. I'm getting a lot of that here, alongside this really strong, robust combo of Angostura baking spice and the notes of mastic liqueur that are just so, so lovely. <laughs> so for anyone who doesn't know, uh, mastic trees produce a resin, and when you distill that resin into a liqueur, you get this sort of comparable to gin essence. It tastes vaguely like juniper, but it's also cucumber and melon and like pepper and, and just this delicious sort of fresh sweetness that I don't think I've ever experienced in any other liqueur I've ever tried. All that is to say, there's no substitute for it. It makes the cocktail so fascinating. And when you pair it alongside the gentle, subtle eau de vie notes of quince and lemon and the orange and the Angostura, it just, it comes out so interesting, so fascinating. So in a way, centered in the history upon which it was built, whether or not that is fictional history. <laughs> like I said, I know nothing about medieval history. The influences that went into building this drink were entirely a manifestation of my own creation, likely fan fiction. But taking that influence and combining it into one thing ultimately made just this just phenomenal, phenomenal drink. This one is a little bit oversweet, I think. There's a little bit too much marmalade in it for my liking. Um, though it's not unbalanced that way. It's got this really nice sort of lingering tartness along the sides of your tongue, which is what you want to look for, really, and a properly balanced um, sour. I just prefer something a little bit more tart. That being said, the composition of two ounces base, one ounce liqueur, one ounce sour, and then modifiers has ultimately made this a really robust, round, and fascinating drink that I don't think you'd be able to get anywhere else. Would it benefit from a lengthener, like some club soda in like the form of like a daisy? Um, you know what, no, I don't think so. I like the notion of it being this really loud, potent flavor bomb that presents a lot of really fascinating and interesting flavors that you wouldn't get otherwise. The addition of using marmalade as a, as a you know, combination sweetener and flavoring component also gives it this really nice thick, but not like sticky uh, mouthfeel. It, it, it's sort of silky in a way because the fruit pectins that make up marmalade, when you shake them, just do that. They, they're really nice. That means too, that it holds up really, really well to being served over ice because even when it dilutes, it won't lose that and it will still maintain a lot of its flavor. I don't think I have ever been as proud of a cocktail so far in my life, as you know, somebody who's invested in this idea of mixology, as I am of this one. Genuinely, I think not, and I mean, obviously you are welcome to disagree with me and have problems with my spec and say whatever you want, you know, make it yourself or not. It's delicious. It's balanced. It's unique. It's based on something. 
I think it's worth putting on the menu. Even if you disagree with me, that's fine. In fact, I prefer that to you inflating my ego by agreeing with me. There's room for improvement, but the way it exists now is honest and shows effort and it's trying to accomplish something, which I think, especially knowing as much as I do about the dark ages of cocktails, that it's worth existing. I can't say that for everything I've ever made. I don't think the Cliffs of Dover necessarily needed to exist, but it does. It's just really pleasant. There's something sort of invigorating about it, I guess. I don't know. I like it a lot. But that when Mastic Liqueur, Keen's Brandy Bass are just so fucking fascinating together, man. It's fucking delicious. So yeah, that is a uh, Athens Has Fallen, a sort of uh, historically adjacent sour variation uh, based on a bourbon for breakfast, um, which I'll find a recipe for. I know I saw somebody make it on Instagram. I hope it's a real cocktail, um, but I saw somebody make it on Instagram. I will link a recipe for it uh, in the description below. If you have any issues finding ingredients uh, for a cocktail like this, I have no partnership with them, but there is a website called Curiata. Um, people like uh, Greg over at How to Drink, who I fucking really hope eventually one day uh, acknowledges my existence and we can collaborate on something, that'd be fucking sick. But he, he has a proper um, like membership collaborative thing with him, with them rather, with Curiata. So uh, go to curiata.com or I think it's drink.curiata.com and you can, you can find, you know, interesting and unique liquors and liqueurs and spirits and all kinds of things uh, on their site, which you might not be able to find in your local, you know, even specialty liquor store. But yeah, that, uh, that, ladies and gentlemen, has been a uh, look at an original cocktail of mine called The Athens Has Fallen. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, click that like button down below and subscribe because I want to do this a lot more often. Um, I'm venturing out into doing free, more frequent Tuesday uploads, which is what this is. Um, and they're a little bit more hectic, a little bit less history heavy, a little bit more creatively minded, let's say. A little bit more loose with the <laughs> theming. So if you want to see more of that, subscribe, like, just watch more videos, I don't give a shit. Do whatever the fuck you want. Uh, but hopefully you, in whatever you do, join me along for the ride. I'm going to go, um, maybe, most likely, actually, finish this. Um, as I realize, actually, I have a, an apartment viewing in about an hour and 25 minutes, so maybe I won't actually finish this. Thank you all so much for watching. Um, there are cards popping up throughout the video and a video card most likely showing now. So hey, watch more videos. There's a video, like I think right there, right now. I think I'm pointing at it right now. Click it, watch it, see how it goes for you. Um, thanks for watching this one though. Have a great rest of your day. Remember to drink responsibly, and I will see you all in the next video. Thanks.